Hi, hello, welcome to Learn Stroke IAS classes by Arjun. You're listening to the Daily Hindu News Analysis with Current Affairs News Leads with Arjun R. Shankar. Today's News Leads is 14th December 2022. Let's check out the important News Leads. And before we go on, uh, uh, from now onwards, you can listen to the editorial summaries, which is going to be a summary compilation of editorials for prelims and mains perspective, especially for 2023 examination. Let's look at the first important news leads. The Chinese tried to change the LAC status quo, Rajnath Singh. So this has uh, been uh, important in the national debate in the uh, today's newspaper. So you should know that the Chinese troops, GS Paper 2 and 3, internal international relations and internal security and uh, security, defense, etc. The Chinese troops unilaterally tried to alter the status quo of the line of actual control in uh, Arunachal Pradesh. Because uh, the Indian army bravely prevented the, the People's Liberation Army of China while transgressing into our territory and compelled them to go back to their post. So that was a good thing and the, the government actually explained Indian army status on that. So you should know what you mean by an LAC which we have already discussed and uh, uh, we have already discussed in yesterday's session about the different aspects and the previous sessions about what do you mean by an LAC, a line of actual control. Refer the previous video and uh, find out what do you mean by that. Moving on, the Supreme Court uh, judge res- recuses herself from hearing Bilkis Banu's petition. So this again, we have yesterday and previous session, we have discussed the complete case of Bilkis Banu. And uh, the, the, the uh, this time the article talks about what is Article 21 of the Indian Constitution, what is a remission and what is Bilkis Banu case. You know that Bilkis Banu was gang raped and 11 men were sentenced to life imprisonment for gang raping her. And recently they were released and uh, Bilkis Banu has submitted the case. So what is Article and uh, this also brings us remission because pardoning, commutation, remission, respite, reprieve are the pardoning measures. And you know, remission means reducing the period of a sentence without changing its character. That means a sentence of rigorous imprisonment for two years can be remitted to rigorous imprisonment for one year. So that is a remission. So do know about pardon, commutation, remission and respite and reprieve. And Article 21 is a fundamental right and is included in the Part 3 of the Indian Constitution. This right is available to all citizens as well as non-citizens alike. The Supreme Court has described this right as the heart of fundamental rights because according to Justice Bhagavati, Article 21 embodies a constitutional value of supreme importance in a democratic society. And even Article 21 cannot be suspended during an emergency. The Article 21 secures two rights, the right to life and the right to personal liberty. So that is basically the right of being a human the right of everyone, the right to life. So know about all this has been uh, mentioned because, you know, right to right to 21. Bilkis Banu uh, said that uh, releasing the uh, criminals serving the uh, life imprisonment is actually a violation of her Article 21. So she was referring to her article, violation of her Article 21 if the criminals were released. That is why the interpretation has come. New Delhi Airport's inadequate security infrastructure flagged GS Paper 3 security. This has brought up the Delhi International Airport security infrastructure has frozen over time and failed to keep pace with the increase in flights and passengers. Uh, a, a top uh, Bureau of Civil Aviation Security Staff or BCAS. So this brings us another important area. What is BCAS? The Bureau of Civil Aviation Security. The BCAS was initially set up uh, as a cell in the DGCA in 1978 on the recommendation of the Pandey Committee. The BCCAS was uh, reorganized into an independent department under the Ministry of Civil Aviation in 1987. It's headquartered in New Delhi and it also lays down aviation security standards in accordance with Annex 17 of the Chicago Convention for airport operators. So there is a Chicago convention for airline industry and they monitor, implement the security and regulation and ensure that the security controls are properly done and do the emergency and surprise check to test the professional uh, efficiency and alertness of the airport security, do mock exercise, etc. This is BCAS or Bureau of Aviation Security. 
Moving on, international travel yet to shake off pandemic blues, but students go abroad in record numbers. GS Paper 2 Education, you can see uh, whatever COVID or pandemic you talk about, the number of people, according to the statistics placed before the parliament, as many as 6,48,600 students have gone abroad on student visas up to November 30, 2020. Over 6 lakh students have gone abroad. And uh, this is an all-time compared high in student movements. And a record number of Indians had gone abroad in 2019. And with over 2.52 crores Indian visiting various countries for different purposes. So 2.5 people uh, crores, 2.5 crore Indians are visiting various countries. And the data also reveals the, uh, you can see the data also reveals one of the important aspect that uh, the international travel to traditional destination for job in West Asia, such as UAE, for the highest number of Indians abroad. So UAE was a high destination. However, the number of Indians going to countries like Canada and UK, the most favored destination for students, surpassed the pre-pandemic level. If it was 6.17 in Canada, and now it is 6.60 lakhs, and 7.54 lakhs with the previous of 7.45 lakhs. So anyway, you can see a lot of people have increased traveling abroad. So uh, this is again an important news. Moving on again, uproar in parliament over India-China clash. So we have already discussed about what is this uproar. And uh, the opposition staged a walkout in both houses of parliament after being denied a discussion on the recent clash between India and China because the opposition wanted to have a discussion on the India-China clash and the, the, the opposition reminded the government that in 1962 Indochina war, they said that during the 1962 Indochina war, the then Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru had rejected outrightly the idea of holding a secret session. He said no secret session and he said, uh, uh, sir, I received a request to that effect from some members and I gave careful consideration. I think at present moment, it would not be desirable to have a secret session. It is desirable in future. I shall make submission. So we need to discuss this difficult time. So the opposition reminded Jawaharlal Nehru's statement regarding the China and that said that there is they need to be open discussion and no point in having a secret session. GS paper to international relations. Moving on, the House panel flags casual approach of government over setting up disability centers, GS paper to welfare. I'm going to give you a main question here. What is District Disability Rehabilitation Center, DDRC? And how can this initiative be a game changer for disabled people in India? And what do you mean by District Disability Rehabilitation Center? So uh, with, uh, with just 55 to 60 uh, rehabilitation centers made functional, out of the targeted 269 in designated district, the parliamentary, the parliamentary Standing Committee on Social Justice and Empowerment has said that the union government is taking it very casually because out of 269, only 55 to 60 uh, DDRC or District Disability Rehabilitation Center have been opened. So the government should have a proper map for creating proper disability rehabilitation centers and uh, and uh, the, dis the District Disability Rehabilitation Center is an initiative done by the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment to facilitate comprehensive services to persons with disabilities in rural areas. It includes uh, awareness, early detect detection, intervention, uh, giving proper checkup, assisting devices, therapeutic services, physiotherapy, speech therapy, etc. So the DDRC is a joint venture between central and the state government. The central government will establish, initiate and implement the center and the state government will provide a, a free, rent-free, well-connected building, basic infrastructure, furnishing, etc. So know about this. Uh, ministry evades. Again, another one uh, is regarding the uh, uh, very important article regarding the uh, ministry evades direct reply on demand to include Ladakh under sixth schedule. So this is GS paper to polity. This brings us to an important area of what is the fifth and sixth constitutional, the schedule of the constitution. So you should know that uh, uh, Ladakh has been uh, uh, evading a direct reply on the possible inclusion of Ladakh under the sixth schedule of the constitution 
the home ministry has said that uh, the main objective of inclusion of tribal population under the schedule is to ensure their overall social economic development which in the case of uh, ladakh has already been taken care ladakh so according to the sixth schedule you obviously expect the inclusion of you know ensure overall socio economic development so that is already taken care in the case of ladakh when it was created a union territory so uh, uh, the ladakh has been demanding that uh, land employment and cultural identity of ladakh should be protected under the sixth schedule so the sixth schedule basically protects tribal populations it provides autonomy to communities through creation of what is called as autonomous developmental council or adc which can frame laws on land public health and agriculture so it has created the autonomous development council and the ministry stated that uh, you know the main objective of inclusion of tribal population under fifth or sixth schedule is to ensure their overall socio economic development and uh, ladakh has already got it so what do you mean by the fifth and sixth schedule of the constitution article 244 of the indian constitution so that is why the creation of autonomous development council article 244 1 of the indian constitution defines scheduled area as the area defined so by the president of india and are mentioned in the fifth schedule so there are more than uh, around 10 states having scheduled areas and 244 deals with the scheduled and tribal areas so the six schedules under article 244 clause 2 relates to those areas in the states of assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram which are declared as tribal and provides for district or regional autonomous council that is the autonomous development council and the part 10 of the indian constitution entails the uh, articles like uh, scheduled and tribal areas with articles 244 and 244a president is empowered to declare an area as scheduled area and you need to know that uh, the uh, uh, article the uh, scheduled uh, the fifth schedule is basically providing the administration and control of scheduled and tribal areas of any state except four states assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram so that is basically the fifth schedule and uh, the sixth schedule uh, talks about the four states of northeast assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram and uh, you should know what you mean by the fifth and sixth schedule of the constitution before we move on there was an article regarding the uh, which i think i've missed in this it was actually an article regarding the fcra because uh, uh, fcra license of around 1800 ngos were cancelled so this brings us what is the fcra or a foreign contribution regulation act foreign contribution regulation act 2010 and you should know that the fcra was initiated in the 1976 and later on it was amended in 2007 uh, 2010 and uh, it was again amended in 2020 giving the government tighter control over the fcra or foreign contribution act so you should know what do you mean by fcra the foreign contribution regulation act moving on to the next is india hits out at oic chief so this brings us again what do you mean by oic it is nothing but organization of islamic corporation india has hit out at oic what is organization of islamic cooperation so india strongly condemned the organization for islamic cooperation saying the organization has lost its credibility you know why because recently the secretary general of oic visited the line of control from pakistan side and was briefed by the situation by the pakistan military india said the organization of islamic cooperation had no, has no locus standing in matters relating to jammu kashmir which is an integral and part of india any attempt to interfere and meddling in india's internal affairs by oic is completely unacceptable so the what is oic or organization of islamic cooperation is actually a, has having a membership of around 57 countries spread across four continents it is uh, uh, the collective voice of the muslim world according to the website and it endeavors to protect the interest of the muslim world in promoting international peace and harmony uh, the organization was established on uh, 25th september 1969 uh, uh, in the first summit that took place in the kingdom of morocco in rabat and in 1970 the first ever meeting of islamic conference was held in jeddah in saudi arabia so 
the oic has permanent delegation to united nations and european union has official languages like arabic english and french so this is no about organization of islamic cooperation india uk fta talks restart with goel badenoch meet this is nothing but india and uk are going for a free trade agreement and the recently the free trade agreement tr- got a trouble because uh, listros resigned after a brief stint of 44 days and uh, it got delayed and india is expecting a huge growth in india uk foreign trade really foreign trade or foreign trade agreement and moving on to gs paper 1 arabindo inspired many generations left his mark wherever he i'm going to give you a mains question india is the most refined idea of human civilization the most natural voice of humanity it's an essay question and you should know more about sri arabindo and recently a commemorative coin and a postage stamp to mark the ongoing 150 at birth anniversary celebrations of sri arabindo was actually done and the prime minister said sri arabindo swami vivekananda and mahatma gandhi are the three icons whose lives and contributions has shaped the destiny of india so know about this history and no panel formed to consider schedule caste status for dalit converts says government gs paper to law you need to know in this article it talks about article 341 of the constitution of india article 340 it's it's basically the article said that the union government has not formed any commission to study granting of schedule caste status to dalit converts the response came when the minister of social justice empowerment uh, a notification came regarding the formation of a commission of inquiry to examine the demand of providing sc status of dalit people of religions other than those notified in the constitution schedule caste order 1950 that means uh, uh, the matter according to supreme uh, schedule caste status to dalits uh, is actually pending with the supreme court uh, especially dalits who are in the category of christianity or islam is actually pending so 341 of the indian constitution says that president with respect to any state or union territory and where it is state after the consultation of governor specify the caste race or tribe or part of group within the caste race or tribe and to be as scheduled caste so the president has a lot of power and even the parliament by a law include or exclude from the list of scheduled caste specified in a notification so parliament has uh, may be by a law include or exclude from the list of scheduled castes and the president can uh, uh, with respect to state union territory uh, with the consultation of governor create a, uh, a suggestion for scheduled caste listing so read article 341 of the indian constitution which is uh, very important in this regard and uh, moving on to the next is assam accord constitution bench list citizenship case for january 10 this nothing but talks about the what is section 6a of the citizenship act what is assam accord and what is article 6 of the constitution because it uh, completely talks about uh, article uh, section 6a of the citizenship act that allows citizen that allows citizenship to illegal immigrants mostly from bangladesh who have entered assam before 1971 so 6a section 6a was special provision inserted into the act uh, which was called a memorandum of settlement called the assam accord signed in 1985 by then rajiv gandhi government so the accord came after 6a agitation and uh, section 6a foreigners who had entered assam before january 1 1966 and been ordinarily resident in the state would have all the rights and obligation of the citizens and those who have entered the state after between january 1 1966 and 1971 would have the same rights and obligation but they will not be able to vote for 10 years so uh, this talks about all this act article 6 of the indian constitution you should know what do you mean by article 6 of the indian constitution because the petitioners who are against this say that this is violation of article 6 of the indian constitution that fixed the cut off date for granting citizenship to immigrants at july 19 1948 so it talks about 1966 and 1971 so they say it's a basic violation of that so know what you mean by section 6a of the citizenship act what is assam accord and article 6 will remove public safety act if uh, 
uh, the um, national conference is coming to power says uh, omar abdullah so you should know uh, uh, the it, the article nothing but it talks about public safety act is only in jnk and nowhere in the country and when the national conference comes to power we'll remove the psa what is public safety act so this is gs paper 2 law the public safety act 1978 of jammu kashmir is an administrative detention law that allows detention of any individual for up to 2 years without a trial or a charge so in jammu kashmir uh, you can be detained for one one up to 2 years without a trial or charge and the, the it allows the arrest and detention of people without a warrant specific charge for an unspecified period of time so what is your opinion on that is it a good thing the act makes provision for the detained person to be informed about the reason of custody and uh, recent amendments were made to the psa in 2012 the detention of person below the age of 18 was strictly prohibited so according to section 22 no suit prosecution or any other legal proceeding shall lie against a person for anything done under the good good faith of psa so it's a big uh, security aspect detention law and uh, you should know what is the your have have, a, have an opinion on this what is your opinion regarding this only one fourth of sanctioned solar projects have taken off says minister this brings us another important question regarding what is solar power what are the advantages of it what are schemes for development of solar parks and ultra mega solar power projects and it also talks about indian busted the great indian busted because india had basically committed to install around 1 lakh 75000 megawatt of renewable energy by 22 of which 100 lakh sorry 100000 or 1 lakh megawatt is to be solar power and uh, you should know that uh, the government hasn't achieved the target as on august 22 only 61000 megawatt of solar power has been in- installed and it says that there are a number of problems regarding the initial of uh, solar powers basically due to uh, hurdles in land acquisition environmental crisis like Uh, the habitat of uh, great indian busted a critically endangered species more than around less than uh, 200 in rajasthan has been encroached upon solar power projects so the solar power projects are creating a problem for the great indian busted so no about this from gs paper 3 energy next is car census is imperative so this brings us another important question regarding what is constitutional scheduled caste and scheduled tribe order second amendment bill 2022 and who are the gonds because the constitutional scheduled caste scheduled tribe orders bill 2022 was introduced in lok sabha and accordingly gond community is to be recognized as a scheduled tribe and it is actually in the newspaper it is given it should be given a scheduled tribe from the scheduled caste so the bill amends the supreme uh, the scheduled caste order to exclude gon community as scheduled caste in four districts of up so it uh, the gon community to be recognized as scheduled scheduled caste a scheduled tribe and not a scheduled caste and it amends uh, scheduled tribe order to recognize gon community as a scheduled tribe in all the four districts of uh, 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 the four important districts of uttar pradesh exactly and who are the gon tribes the gons are one of the largest tribal groups in india they are found in many states madhya pradesh andhra pradesh telangana chatisgarh maharashtra bihar odisha and uttar pradesh so the gons speak various languages like marathi odia and hindi and uh, uh, chatisgarh bastar is the main important region and the uh, important gon tribes like hill maria bison horn maria and the the muria are all part of this and they were actually part of the great kingdom of chanda and great irrigation technologies and forts were built during the old and chanda uh, gonds and uh, they were actually conquered by moguls for some duration and later the third anglo maratha war the territories of gond rajas were occupied by marathas so later on the british people took away the forest livelihood rights and that led to the famous bastar rebellion of 1910 which was an armed struggle against the british so know about this gonds and uh, gonds been listed as scheduled tribes from scheduled caste they are the gond tribes know about this 
150 years of Kolkata's iconic tram to be celebrated GS Paper 1. This is a wonderful history because Kolkata will witness an event that will celebrate 150 years of its iconic tram and renew hope that this non-polluting mode of transport does not become extinct. So there is an important organization or a group called Tram Jatra for tram journey. So um, this is all important. So know about this and... Uh, the European Union agrees to give candidate status to Bosnia. This again brings us international relations and world geography. This also brings us two important question. Where is Bosnia located and what are the Balkan states? They talk about the Balkan states. Take a close look at the map, world geography. You can see that near to Romania, Hungary, Croatia and Serbia, Montenegro, you can see Bosnia and Herzegovina. So Bosnia, you can see the, the the peninsula as the balkan peninsula is bordered by the adriatic sea the ionian sea the aegean sea the turkish straits and the black sea so just see about the uh, bosnia herzegovina the bosnia region know in the geography where exactly is this located and the balkans the balkans are usually categorized as comprising albania bosnia herzegovina bulgaria croatia kosovo Montenegro, North Macedonia, Romania, Serbia, Slovenia. When some people say that a portion of Greece and Turkey is also included in the Balkan area. But these are some of the important Balkan states. Very important for prelims examination. You can actually have a question regarding this. Next is Admiral Hari Kumar, India's Navy Chief, visits Sri Lanka, GS Paper 2, International Relations and Defense, GS Paper 3. This talks about nothing but uh, uh, Indian indigenous naval ship called Sahayadri. It is a multi-role missile frigate of Indian Navy, Sahayadri, a multi-role missile frigate and is scheduled to make a call in Colombo. And this also uh, and discusses about the recent Chinese military vessel uh, Yuan Wang 5, which re-entered the Indian Ocean region. So it talks about I, uh, the naval ship INS Sahayadri, the multi-role missile frigate of Indian Navy. Next is a breakthrough in fusion technology. So, uh, GS Paper 3 Energy, US researchers announced a historic nuclear fusion breakthrough on what could pave the way for alternative clean energy solution. It could lead to an alternate clean energy solution and they talk about nuclear fusion. So, you should know what do you mean by a nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is the process by which two light atomic nuclei combine to form a single heavier one while releasing massive amounts of energy. Fusion reaction take place in a state of matter called plasma, a hot charged gas made of positive ions and free moving electrons. The sun along with other stars is powered by this reaction of nuclear fusion. So know about this thing. Next is Moderna Mech C positive results from cancer vaccine GS paper 3 biotech vaccine. So this is discussed about the concept of what is messenger RNA. So the messenger RNA is nothing but a type of single standard RNA involved in protein synthesis. It is a molecule within cells that carries instruction to form proteins. So uh, the, uh, the messenger RNA is made from a DNA template during the process of transcription. The main role of mRNA is to carry protein information from the DNA in a cell's nucleus to the cell's cytoplasm where the protein making machinery reads the mRNA sequence and translates each base codon into corresponding amino acid, growing a protein chain. So uh, this is uh, messenger RNA and this article talks about uh, the, MR uh, the, uh, the messenger RNA was very vital in the development of vaccines in COVID and scientists have long believed that it could help fight viruses and diseases like cancer apart from COVID. So uh, the recently, uh, for the first time, they were used for skin treating skin cancer patients. The technique of uh, messenger RNA was treated. So apart from COVID vaccine, this can also have huge impact in the treatment of cancer. India may be the first to hold satellite spectrum auction, GS Paper 3 technology and GS Paper 2 regulatory body, India. So what do you mean? India will be the first country to auction spectrum for satellite communication or SATCOM and it should be designed to attract investments. So the 
telecom regulatory authority of india try would soon make recommendations to make permissions required for satellite communication so india will be the first to handle the issue of auctioning the space and uh, this is also bringing an important area concept of what is the tri or the telecom regulatory authority of india it is a statutory body and uh, which is created by an act of parliament called the telecom regulatory act of uh, 1997 and uh, the the powers of tri have been considerably diluted by the tri amendment of 2000 and now the regulation of telecom services is done by the telecom disputes settlements appellate tribunal called tdsat so uh, the tri is very important and uh, you know why tri is popular it uh, regulates telecom services including tariff for telecom services etc so know about tariff and the uh, satcom next is us inflation slowed sharper to 7.1% so this is gs paper 3 economy you should know that uh, uh, consumer prices uh, rose to 7.1% from a year earlier so uh, uh even with the last month's further easing of inflation the federal reserves like reserve bank of india plans to keep raising interest rate so even uh, the inflation has slowed down to 7.1% the Fe- the federal bank the interest rate is kept high and economists have warned that uh, continuing to tighten the credit to fight inflation is likely to cause recession so they say that if you keep uh, even though the uh, inflation is coming down if you keep tightening the uh, credit to fight inflation that is going to uh, create a recession so next is real rates turn positive as inflation slow downs so this is again a, a very important article the uh, it has actually india's real interest rate has turned positive after headline retail inflation came below 6% for first time this year so india's real interest rate has turned positive and rbi has raised repo rate by 225 basis points since may to tackle inflation so you know that when you, when there is inflation you you see that rbi is raising the repo rate so this is very clear or when inflation happens rbi is raising it next is uh, uh regarding the uh, china plans more than 143 billion push to boost chips compete with the us it is nothing but uh, china is working on more than 1 trillion yuan support packages for semiconductor industry so you should know what you mean by a semiconductor industry and basically this is to counter the us move because the uh, us president joe biden signed a landmark bill to provide 52.7 billion in grants for us semiconductor production so china is again working very hard for uh, uh, making its uh, it is giving more subsidy and tax credit to make semiconductor production very important in china because us is countering them with the production of semiconductors and chips so china again gives subsidies and tax credits to increase the semiconductor production so you need to know what you mean by a semiconductor and uh, i think i missed out one more important there was another important article regarding the uh, npas because uh, bank rights of npas and what do you mean by npa it means non performing assets and uh, the banks have written off bad loans worth 10000 almost 10 lakh crores wow it's a big amount 10 lakh uh, uh, 9500 crores have been written off in the last 5 fiscal years last 5 fiscal years so banks write off npa as a part of their regular exercise to clean up their balance sheet and npa is a loan or advance for which the principal or interest remained overdue for a period of 90 days so banks classify npas into substandard doubtful and loss assets so you should know what you mean by npa and these are some of the important news leads that came in today's newspaper so sit back and watch learnstroke is classes by arjun subscribe to our channel and listen to more of the video